Now, at the moment I'm just starting to put a box together uh, for South Coast. Now, I'm going to put a couple of basically duck fly light patterns. Uh, the, there's two here. This is obviously, these are penal patterns, as I would call black. This is a Hutchie's penal, and this is a Corrib duck fly pattern a tie. Uh, it's not mine, it's not my fly, it's just a pattern I've tied before many years ago and uh, it's a very good midge pattern and these two are certainly worth having in the box and uh, and as duck fly season's coming up, meaning these midge are coming off once we start to heat up uh, certainly worth having in your box, uh, any of the two patterns I'm going to be tying the Corrib uh, duck fly now thread I'm going to be using is it just a black thread uni a O, hook choice, like depending if you want a lightweight or a, this is a heavier weight. This is the, the full and mill. It's a competition uh, heavyweight size twelve. You could go a lighter wire, a medium wire. This is a heavier. Could in the hey, big wave and stuff. So you want both. It's worth having some both. So anyway, wax the thread. When you quickly come down with the thread to the just before the barb. Basically, when I let the thread go, it's just before the barb. And for this one, the uh, cord I'm using dyed instead of natural uh, golden pheasant tippet. Just hold the tips. What I do is hold the tips like this, and then come in with the points, take out the tail, take away the main feather, and leave these fibres. Now, the carriage stays on in top, a couple of turns, heading down the way. It's fine, I'm happy with that. Now the rib of this fly is a Chinese red unifloss. This one, the neon one. Uh, you could use whatever red fly or red rib. It's up to yourself. Now you've got to, when you take this, take it off, you basically half it. If you twist it, uh, it basically splits in half. So when you catch this in, pull into the body. Now the body of the fly, you could use a dubbin or something. Or what I'm using here, this is Condor Sub. This is from Vineyards. It's a dark olive. Now you don't need many fibres. Now you tear it away. Now the tip's just a wee bit fine. You take it out, catch it on, and we wind my thread up. Now, this is the weakest fibre, so what I'm going to do is wind this the opposite way. The rib's going to protect it. So, you wind this up. You get a nice, nice body with it. It's basically turkey. This is dyed turkey. Now, what we do to tie it in is to we come over the, uh, the fibre, do a turn onto the hook, do it again. Just locking it in two or three times. Trim away the waist. For a rib, now I like to twist it one way, tighten it up. Stops it, stops it spreading. And then you just rub it up through about five to six times. Get to the top, three or four turns, sure it's secure. As I say, that's going to, because it's cr crossing over the, uh, the body, it's protecting, it's holding it in. Now the hackle of the fly is just a badger. This is just a hen. Badger hen. This is a Chinese badger. It's getting to the end of this cape, so I don't have a great choice. Uh, this one. You tie in by the tip. Length is up to yourself. It can be short, long. Uh, it's depending on the style that you like, some like it quite short, meaning the fibre to the point of the hook. I like it slightly by. So I'm just going to lock back the tip here because we're tying it in by the tip. I usually just break it off. Because I've waxed the thread, it's nice and tight. Should be fine. Now, what I'm doing is folding the hackle back. Now this is where a number of turns depends on the quality of the feather you're using. Uh, you could 
stop it a couple of turns. I'm just going to put an extra one in. So it's three turns. A couple of turns down towards the eye. Take away your half of pliers. Keeping the thread always tight. Just fold it back, keeping the thread tight again. Then you can break that off. So your hackle's sitting. It's fine. Now it's optional where you do this. I have, I should have a split. There we are. Got a jungle cock. Uh, you could use goose by if you wish. You could use dyed or whatever. But this is just a natural jungle cock. Now you can see this one has a, a split. A lot of the small ones have splits. So I obviously keep them. And they're ideal. I mean, you, you, you get this, this size of flies. Splitting the jungle cock is probably makes sense, especially nowadays. Now what I've done is I'm encouraging it down either side and I want these in line with the body. So let me see how they're sitting. Just like wing buds. And uh, this side okay. That's your side's fine, mine's just slightly down so I'm just gonna go back just to, and it's a wee bit short so I'm just gonna bring it towards the back a bit. It's fine. Head down, put your thread in front, start to come back up. Now we see if it's going to break off. Here we are, perfect. Don't always break off. Uh, if they break off, they're ideal because you get a nice neat cut if you do that. You've got to keep the thread tight when you're doing it. Wet finish, straight away. There we are. And that's basically the corrupt up fly. And then it's a matter of finishing off with a quite varnish. careful. You can apply it whatever way you like. You can use your tub and needle. And you see um tapered brush. And then there we are. And that's as I say the curb duck fly. This is another good one, the Hutch's one, you can see nice pair. Uh, certainly makes not do any harm fishing the locks with these uh, beginning of the season when the duck fly are coming off or any midge. Good old patterns, worth doing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, to say enjoy the videos, please subscribe and thank you for watching.